I got my co-host too, and my friend Ann. I'm Michael Villapoto, your host. Welcome to Three Hungry Guys. When I first decided to do this series, this was the exact type of restaurant that I wanted to cover. Quaint little cute neighborhood place that everybody comes to. Kevin Callahan opened this restaurant in 1998 and I've been coming ever since. They have a lot of great specials and food to try. And we're going to chow down because there's going to be a lot of great food for this episode. So come in and join us and we're going to have a great time today. <laughs> We were really hungry today. This place is known for a lot of small plates with a lot of different things. We ordered a bunch of food. We had a tomato caprese with a basil pesto and deviled eggs, a mahi-mahi ceviche, fried okra and peppers, sausage plate with little crostinis. And this little guy is their homemade cornbread that they make in-house. So every time you order it, they make it fresh. It's really cool because it comes in the skillet that's custom made. So they make great cocktails, which two decided she wanted a... A sweet tea cocktail. And for me, I don't like the taste of alcohol and this you can't taste it at all, but you can feel it. So that's what's important. <laughs> She's not the designated driver. They don't have a, a large wine selection, but they have some great wines. Uh, Kevin, the owner, is really into the wines and really seeks out different small vineyards for unique wines. Two or three times a year, he has wine dinners that are fed. It's probably the best thing he does, actually. Five or six course meal. He pairs with a different wine with a different entree, closes the restaurant to just the wine group. It sells out. Probably the best wine dinner I've ever been to. Okay, cut some cornbread. <laughs> I like my cornbread actually a little on the sweet side. Yeah, so what I look for in a good cornbread is, obviously I love corn, so it has to taste like corn. It can't taste like a pound cake. I like my bread kind of spongy, like more on like the pound cake spongy side. <laughs> the butter is to die for. So we have uh, three kinds of sausage. Um, this guy here is uh, called, a, it's called a Thuringer. It's a South African um, sort of spiced sausage. This guy is a beef and cheddar. And then this is a pork and um, green garlic. Very unique, very flavorful, very tasty. And I mean, look at the way it was presented. So cute! So I recall the cooking at Acme, kind of a southern, upscale southern cuisine. So right here we're trying fried okra with some roasted peppers. And it's not your typical just throw it in some batter and fry it. Four rolls of cornmeal season properly. So what I like about these peppers are you're playing pepper roulette because you never know what's a hot one so you eat them and then you come across a hot one so that's kind of fun and the okra I really like because it's not too slimy. My favorite part is that I'm a dipper and this aioli sauce is to die for. You can't eat it without it I think. And now we have a ceviche dish. I don't think it's really traditional southern it's more South American Latin American but they make it with a mahi mahi avocado tomatoes. Ceviche. Ceviche, ceviche. <laughs> you know, we're gonna have. Yeah, yeah. We have all, no correct way. We have a whole, We're gonna have to do a whole episode on how to pronounce words because evidently, she's got a different pronunciation from everything American. But she's Vietnamese, yep. so what does she know? English was my second language. Pecan, I didn't, pecan, I didn't even tomato, speak tomato. it until I was seven. So. But yet she wants to tell us how to speak it. Ceviche. Ceviche is basically raw fish that they'll slice up and beat. This particular one's mahi mahi, and they squeeze lemon and lime juice on it, and the acids from the citric fruits basically cook, cook the fish. So the last small dish we're going to try, tomato caprese salad with a basil pesto sauce. It also comes with a little pickled zucchini to add a little tart bite to it. So we're going to see how this goes, but it looks great. Their in-house pesto and basil mix, I think, makes it Special. I really like it. It's, it's kind of a very similar to a, a traditional caprese salad that you get. Very tasty. Love the deviled eggs, so it works. This is probably my favorite salad of all times. But I will say that having this pickled zucchini yeah. on it really gets at the touch. It, it makes it feel like it's a um, sweetened uh, balsamic glaze almost too. So I switched out my drink. I started with a sweet tea, and this is a seasonal watermelon sangria. Cheers! We got our three entrees for tonight. So the first one is, is a pork chop. The thing looks like it's the world's biggest pig because the thing is huge. Our second dish is salmon. They have great seafood here. It usually has a fresh seafood dish daily. And then finally, it's one of the most popular dishes is their fried chicken. So this is a, cre a creamy polenta, cheese flavor in there. It's really good. It looks like a, a cilantro pesto on top. Perfect, tender, moist. 
I like the crusted seasoning they did on the outside. Yeah, they seared it perfectly. It's, we're about to cut into the world's largest pork chop. It's got a nice breading to it. Uh, I'm assuming it's deep fried. Usually a pork chop is dry. This is not dry. It's so moist. It's served over a zephyr squash casserole. What the hell a zephyr squash is, I don't know. It's tasty. It's hard to describe unless you eat it, but it is so good. It has a basil pesto coating, but it's a moist, juice, super thick pork chop. When two finally stops drinking, I'm gonna have her describe this dish to you. This is a fried chicken dish that they are known for, and the sauce is a heirloom tomato gravy. On a, on a bed of mashed potatoes with some little cherry tomatoes cut up. It's one of their signature dishes. Like I said, they are known for their twist on Southern cuisine, so this is one of their staples that's been on the menu forever, and people love it. Love it. It isn't greasy, it's crisp, and super moist. We're at two's favorite part of the meal, dessert. Actually, it's Anne's favorite part of the meal, too. Look. So, Acme was actually written up in Bon Appetit a few years ago for the desserts. Today, we have a black pepper ricotta cheesecake with the fig compote. The other dessert is a chocolate terrine with some whipped cream on it. Ooh, you can, you can taste the black pepper. <laughs> There's a sea salt on top of that. Well, that's nice. Man, that's good dessert. I'm a chocolate guy, so deep, dark, rich. Man, that's wild. It is so smooth, so rich. We are making shrimp chile quiles with a spicy charred tomato sauce. We are gonna saute these nice North Carolina shrimp. Now that's more or less tortilla chips. Now we're gonna add a little spinach to this for a little, a little color, a little green. There it is, guys. I grew up in the South. This is the food I grew up around. Foods that remind me of good friends, family, those, those great moments that you have in life at the table. My grandfather's family settled a little community called White Cross in the 1600s, literally about 15 miles from here. The food that grew out of that, sort of the Depression South, was what I grew up around thinking of as comfort food, the foods that I loved. Tell us about this. The Smoke and Salt Festival. We're going to be <laughs> salt at that. and Smoke. That's where one place we're going to be filming next. Third annual Salt and Smoke Festival is coming up November 8th. We are going to cook two 200 pound hogs, smoke them right there. We bring up about 5,000 oysters from the Eastern Shore. There's bluegrass music and a bunch of bands to play all night long. So that was a fantastic meal. Oh, I'm so full. Don't wear a crop top if you're coming here, but do come hungry because you're going to leave satisfied and full. I conquered that pork chop. That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And we'll catch you next time on Three Hungry Guys because we're coming to a restaurant near you. Ciao. Bye. I can almost speak. I can't. If it has more than three syllables, evidently, I can't say it. I look, I look like a friend flip, Fred flip, 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 A what? I guess we're cutting that shit out. I know to say apple in Chinese. Apple. Okay.